Good morning! It is 8.45, Tuesday, May 23rd today, and uh, I just finished packing all my stuff up, and uh, Buzz just left about 10 minutes ago and strided about an hour ago. He was, he was wide awake, but the mosquitoes were crazy this morning and last night, so we spent a lot of time in our tents, and I think they wanted to pack up and get out of here quick. I know I got a couple mosquito bites myself, but we're saying bye to Joshua Tree Spring for now, and uh, we are heading 17 miles today. That is our goal to Chimney Creek Campground. It's a BLM campground, which is Bureau of Land Management. So they, they're they always set up. They got, uh, you know, fire pits and things like that. And uh, it's always refreshing to go there, you know, and be able to have a nice fire and maybe even a table to cook on and things like that. So that's our goal. Then the next day, we'll do 21 straight into Kennedy Meadows. And I have to be honest, we were talking the last night, me and Buzz and Strider, and it is just the craziest feeling finally getting to Kennedy Meadows. I mean, we've talked about it for so long, and you know, before you start the trail, you know, you, Kennedy Meadows is such a, a big place to go. You know, it's it's kind of like a turning point in the trail for for us, the end of the desert section and the beginning of the Sierras and uh, all the snow. So we're excited to get there in just a day and a half. Uh, Man, it's a new day. Let's do it today. We are at mile 674 and ran into this guy. This is the Great White Turtle. I'll give you the Great White, the, in front of it. Is that okay? uh, Capital the. The is important. Yeah. And uh, he is the first guy, or the second person I met going southbound, but the first guy that was positive about the Sierras. <laughs> and he came from Mammoth, right? So he's done the Sierras. And uh, he left March 29th and blasted through them. So he is giving us some good advice and telling us that we can do it. So don't believe you, everything you hear online, because people are... Micro spikes and an ice axe. Yeah, just have the right equipment and set yourself up, and you're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> Alright, take care. I am at mile 680 and this is Saunter, man. He's set up here. Is this your van? Yep. This is awesome. And uh, I rolled up and the first thing he asked me was, what do I want to drink? And he said, Dr. Thunder. And you know I like my Dr. Thunder. Or Dr. Pepper. Or Mr. Pip. But he's got cherries, he's got bananas, and chili dogs, man. So thank you very much, man. We You're just, welcome. I want to give you a thank And he's wearing lime green, which is my favorite color. I mean, what? What else do you need around here? <laughs> well, it is 4.45 p.m. and we just got done hanging out with Saunter. Huge thank you to that guy, man. He had uh, drinks and fruit and he made me a chili dog. I got Strider behind me there. And uh, we're walking uh, point two to Chimney Creek Campground. Apparently there's a well there, so there's water there. So we don't have to worry about that. And uh, then tomorrow we have 21 miles into Kennedy Meadows, man. What a feeling it is to just be there. It's gonna be awesome. It's just like hitting a really big milestone of the trail. So I'm very excited for that. Um, and tonight um, there should be a fire pit or something like that. So we're gonna have a fire and 
I, I say this all the time, but man, a fire is a morale booster big time. You know, sometimes when you get to a camp and you can't really make a fire, it's too cold or, you know, you get in late or something, it's like you just sit there in the dark and make yourself some food and go to bed. But it's nice when we can hang out and relax by the fire. So we're going to do that. And uh, yeah, man, one more day to Kennedy Meadows. It's about 5.15 and I'm just setting up my stuff and I remember there was a gentleman that commented on a video on YouTube and asked what my sleep system was. And uh, if anyone knows me knows I'm not that much of a gearhead. I, uh, when I was researching the trail I just found some things that were lightweight and that were in my budget and uh, went for it. So this might not be the most ultra light gear or the best way to do it but it works for me and that's all that matters and when you get out here and you're hiking I promise you you will not think about gear so much I promise and uh, so this is what has worked for me but always find what works for you that's what's important and what's comfortable for you I just finished setting up my tent that is the tarp tent notch it is I believe 27 ounces and I have had no problems with it actually it works perfect and that's like tonight when the bugs are going crazy you got that net inside which is awesome uh, this is my sleeping pad. It is uh, my newest piece of gear. It's the REI Flash. I've had it go flat a couple times, but it was when it was really cold. It has a lot uh, to do with it staying pumped up, but it works well. Second thing is my sleeping bag. This is, uh, I believe it's Enlightened Equipment, and it is the 20 degree bag. And I forgot how much it weighs, I'm sorry. I'm sure somebody will know online uh, how much it weighs. Uh, but it's not heavy at all. It's really light. And uh, I got the Sea to Summit bag in Mount Laguna. I carried it in an originals bag, but it wouldn't uh, compress the, uh, the down enough for me. And it took up a lot of space in my pack, so I got this and it's been working perfect. So one of the biggest things that I do like about this combination is uh, I lay my sleeping bag down first like that and uh, the bags they make them they're actually quilt it's actually a quilt and uh, but they have a toe box you can zip up there and then these clips right on the back and you can just clip uh, them to the back of the pad so you're not sliding around on top of your pad and uh, you get the warmth from the pad uh, from the ground the insulation so you don't get too cold at night so I just button them I don't do the top one uh, I leave a little bit of room around my neck and uh, so I button these all up and then I flip it over and the last thing that I add to it is this is a Z packs bag uh, and they make it this is goes on the inside or the outside it's like a fleece material and I just leave it like this all day I pack it like this if I set it on the ground I just set it on the Cuban fiber side so that it doesn't get too dirty um, and I pack all my clothes in it so uh, during the day and then at night any clothes that I'm not wearing I uh, stuff in there and make a pillow. The only downside to that is on the colder nights, you got a smaller pillow. I use my cleanest shirt at the time, whenever I'm camping, and I wrap it around my sleeping bag so that the pillow doesn't slide around at night, because uh, I'm kind of a restless sleeper, so it'll slide around the pad or it'll get pushed way up and then all of a sudden I'm sleeping on no pillow. So I use my cleanest shirt and I wrap it around my sleeping pad with that, and tonight, it's this one. And that is how she's done. Last thing I want to point out to you guys is one of the coolest things I like about this uh, quilt um, is that it has this drawstring right here. So I just tuck my shoulders in under here, throw a beanie on when I'm sleeping or my hat, and uh, cinch this up real tight around my neck. And it keeps all the heat in my body and my head stays pretty warm too. I believe his name was Victor. That was for Victor, and uh, I hope that answered some of your questions. And uh, now I'm gonna make myself some dinner because I am 